Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nameless Studio. Today we are going to continue working on the two small 5x7 encaustic pieces um, that we've been slowly working through for the past few days now. Um, with that being said, both these pieces started out um, really as just kind of color theory exercises trying to figure out really what the capabilities of this new green uh, were capable of. So with that in mind, let's get started. All right, so we are going to start today by working on the first piece um, that we originally started with. Um, this piece at the moment um, is primarily in that green tone with very little of the orange element in play. Um, if you recall, a bit of the orange that we'd usually put down with the encaustic um, was covered by the green. That semi-transparent semi green ended up being very opaque when it covered the other very opaque color. So a lot of that orange that we had intended um, to be a part of this um, got kind of washed out. So we are going to add some more orange elements. Currently, we are going to add a couple small orange circles to mimic the ones that we have on the secondary piece. So we are going to use a very sharp exacto knife um, to cut and score um, these little spots, being very careful not to score too deep because we do not want to groove um, the wax itself. And so once we end up cutting these circles, we are going to then um, fill them with the neo color. Um, we are going to use that um, same sort of yellow-orange base color that we went with before. Um, and then we are going to cover that with um, the darker red-orange um, on top of that. We want to continue um, building the same way that we built the um, orange line on the edge here, um, just so we have these similarities between those colors. Because if I were just to put down the red-orange, it would look just a little different than the rest. So with that, we're going to move back to the second piece and begin work on this one. Now, if you recall, we took a lot of the green away from this piece using the X-Acto knife. Um, we pulled a lot of that back um, to give it a lot of um, texture and to add some really interesting sort of movement and strokes um, within the actual wax itself. But now we're going to add more green back in, and we're going to do that with the Neo Color 2s um, instead of using more encaustic wax. Because at this point, we have both the Neo Colors and the orange, and also the transfer paper graphite line elements happening in these small circles. So if we were to reheat um, this piece to help fuse another layer of encaustic, we would run the risk of um, diffusing and kind of uh, hurting or changing um, the elements that we already have in play. Because um, what happens was, is that the um, Neo Pastels and the graphite elements kind of stay on top of the wax and then the wax melts. So it sort of, sort of uh, jiggles and diffuses in a weird, somewhat unpredictable way sometimes when you start to reheat those elements, even slightly. Um, so when it comes to the last few layers of encaustic painting, I tend to stay away from actually using heat um, because I do not want to disrupt um, what I've already accomplished with the piece. So we're going to take um, a, the green neo color and we are going to um, add a bit more element of that into it. And that's also going to allow all of the strokes and marks that we made with the X-Acto knife to still shine through um, with such a thin layer of color. So we'll still keep a lot of that um, texture and, and, and sort of diffused um, sort of marks will we'll continue on. So we're going to, to wet it, to spread it around a little bit. And we will see kind of what happens with it. So now I'm just kind of painting in um, these elements um, very softly, um, again, to, to keep those marks that we made pretty predominant, but also to keep the sort of transparent nature of the encaustics that we're trying to mesh it with um, on the same level. 
So we don't want there to be a discrepancy between, no, this is encaustic and this is pastel. We want them to both sort of read at least similar, similarly, if not the same. So now that we have that green on there and it's a little dried out, we're going to soften some of these, these hard edges that the, the tape made um, in, in, uh, in creating the boundaries. So we're going to take an exact knife and just, just soften up some of those edges just a little bit um, so it's, it's, it doesn't draw too, too much attention. We still want the attention to be more towards the middle of the piece um, with some of these outside colors just acting as more tonation um, than something to draw the eye. And this way I'll be doing this a lot. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the final couple layers or processes for these pieces is me getting into just fine um, exacto knife work and trying to just roughen up um, some of the, the work to give it more of a worn and used sort of feel. Um, doing it that way um, yeah, it really, really reads well to how I like to use the medium. And so now we're going to go back in down to the bottom and do the same thing that we're going to top, just sort of work it back in to the piece itself so that it feels uh, more complete and not like an a <clears throat> aspect that's been added on top. And by doing this, it definitely feels uh, much more a part of the overall piece um, than a layer that we've added after the fact. So you'll be seeing me kind of scratching vaguely um, at the edges quite a bit to, to help sort of bring it back in line with, with uh, the, the feel of the rest of the, the piece, especially on pieces that are a lot softer like this one. Some that have a much harder edges or um, a lot more contrast between the color and the background, I don't do as much. But this one is overall is more about um, soft colors and a lot of texture. Um, this piece actually uh, might end up being more of a template for a larger piece. There's a lot of elements going on in this little piece um, that I might transfer into a larger piece down the road. So looking at these two pieces, they're starting to feel a little similar, um, but still have a little ways to go. So this video is a little shorter than some of the others, and that is partly due to the fact that um, we are towards the end of both of these pieces. And when we get closer to the end um, of a work, a lot of the process is really just looking and figuring out what the next step is. Where does the next mark go? Uh, does the composition balance nicely? Do the colors work? And it's just a lot of fine tuning, looking, and just figuring out what the next scenario is. Um, so with that in mind, tomorrow we will be finishing these pieces up um, and we'll be moving on to something very different next week. Uh, so stay tuned tomorrow um, for the finishing of these two pieces. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe below for more content. And as always, I've been Tyler and this has been Nameless Studio. Thank you for watching and be seeing you.